Hey guys, what's up? There was a Q&A session that I cut out of the final video because I didn't want it to be too long. It was already 30 minutes long. So what I had done when we were driving is I took some of my favorite questions from his uh, Mastermind Talks icebreaker cards and I uh, kind of ripped through them with him just to get a little deeper into his life and actually forced him to answer some of these questions. So I hope you enjoy this uh, segment. It's about 10 minutes long. Talk to you guys later. Peace. All right, so I want to I want to hop into some questions here that I've got for you. That's going to yeah, take yeah. you outside of your storytelling, you know, your journey. And many of these actually got off your cards. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to see what you have to say about this. Um, let's start with, what did you want to be when you were growing up? Uh, you know what? Before I so in high school, I worked a lot. I worked forty hours a week making fairly good money so I was the guy with like the nice car because when you're at that, that age you're just gonna buy you know a car and put all that money into a car and stuff like that so I, I definitely had an interest in cars at that point in time but I had an interest in cars before that I actually had this I don't know where I got this idea but my, my mom dug it out I had I made this vision board when I was like 11 or 12 really? of uh, what was the guy's name Anyways, it was this guy, remember Body for Life? It was like a Billy... Oh, uh, Bill Phillips. Bill Phillips! Oh yeah, yeah Bill Yeah, so Bill... Joe, Joe Polish knows him well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Bill, well, jo you know Josh Mazzoni? No. Oh, you okay. Well, Josh was at Mastermind Talks. He grew his business, his most recent business, from zero to 200 million in two years. Really? Okay. Um, and, uh, but anyways, he used to work with Bill Phillips. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I know. Um, but anyways, so but I had a picture of Bill Phillips I got from the book, uh, his book. I cut it out, put it on this vision board, and I put a cutout of my head on it because I wanted to have like a nice shape. And I also had a picture of like a 1969 Ford Mustang Mach 1. Um, so I always had an interest in cars. Interesting. Okay. Um, and that was the, that's like by the way one of my favorite cars. Not the 69 Mach Mach 1, but the 69 Boss 429 Mustang. Oh really? Like nice white. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah. When you know, the big. Yeah, uh, no. Put scoop on it. Yeah. yeah, so that's that. The 69 Mach 1 was my personal. Uh, that was my goal. That was like my vision goal. Awesome. That was like 12. So. Um, so you wanted to be Bill Phillips. <laughs> Bill, Bill Phillips in a Mustang, uh, in a Mach 1. Nice. Um, but yeah, so I mean, I think. So basically, I, an entrepreneur. Something to do with cars, most likely. Like I wanted to be in great shape, and I, I liked cars. Yeah. Uh, and my father was very much like worked with his hands and that kind of stuff, and I saw what it did to his life. Yeah. And I just didn't want to do that. So I, I and I did have some entrepreneurial tendencies like mowing lawns and all that kind of stuff when I was younger. So, um, yeah, it definitely kind of led towards being an entrepreneur. So, if you if you had to pick up and leave right now, what three things would you take with you? It is so funny to ask this question. Um, so, basically, well, well, my passport, my credit cards, my laptop, ideally. Uh, but Candice, my wife, so it's my 30th birthday two days ago. And this is part of my 30th birthday. But, anyways, um, she made me this book of all these letters from just friends of mine. Yeah. Um, just these letters of gratitude, and it's like that thick. You haven't read through it all yet. Though. No way. Yeah. And yeah. but it's like guys like you have a letter in there. Yeah. Ryan Holiday, um, AJ Jacobs, like just amazing people. Yeah, that's brilliant, and brilliant. Thing, I, yeah. I, it's so funny because when she gave it to me. I, I looked at it and, and that's the, that question popped in my head because I'm like, oh, I'd always take my credit cards and all that kind of stuff. But I'm like, I will never leave anywhere without this book. Yeah. Like, my house catches fire. I'll get my daughter and my wife out of the way. But, the book. but this like this book means like everything because that's that's what that's it's right. all about. Like I don't measure my success by how many podcast downloads I have or by how many you know books I've sold or what's in my bank account. Yeah. But like the impact you've made in people's lives. Um, so it was just a beautiful gift in that sense. So it's hilarious that you asked that question because it popped in my head. Yeah, that's great. The past couple of days. Yeah. What what book was a game changer for you? Yeah. Oh God, so many. Uh, I mean, the four-hour work week, to some degree, uh, definitely shifted my mindset on what is the purpose of business, like what's core function of business. Um, so there's a great story. I think it's called From Fables to Fortune, uh, which is about this Mexican and this MBA, which is a story I, I love. But that's probably one of the more impactful ones. And another great one, uh, I'm a huge fan of like Tony Robbins stuff, so he has some great books as well. But uh, Wicked and Giant. Yeah, uh, Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. It's funny, I was talking to Rowan about, because we went through these questions in the car on the way, and I was asking her the question, yeah. and that's the book that she mentioned. Really? Yeah. Fan have you read it? No, I haven't. Fantastic book. Yeah. Fantastic okay. book. If you could do everything all over again, what would you do differently? Uh, the only thing I would do differently, which is still a pain point in my personal life, is like my physical fitness. 
everything else, like, I am, even like today, like, I'm incredibly, like, content. I was, I, I didn't know, like, my, my wife had all these, like, you know, clues and made me run around the city for my birthday and all this kind of stuff, and it, it was nice, but, you know, when I left the when I woke up this morning, you know, my wife got dressed really nice, my daughter was dressed really nice, I was under the impression we were going to Toronto, have, like, dinner together or something, I was totally cool with that, you know what I mean? Like, I am very happy with uh, where I am, and, you know, to say, it's easy now to look back at, like, the hard times in 2012, my rock bottom, and romanticize and be like, oh, it wasn't that bad. Like, it was bad. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if if I had, <laughs> if I had the courage to do it, I would probably would have taken my life at the time if I didn't have, like, my daughter my wife wow. in, in my life. And, uh, but without those lows, I wouldn't be able to appreciate kind of where I am. Because financially, I'm not where I need to be or where I was before. But I've never felt love never felt more kind of content and I'm still you know striving to grow and stuff like that but it's all about quality or quantity in everything I do yeah. so I wouldn't do much different besides more of a focus on my personal fitness and my personal Self-care. Yeah. yeah I want to ask you a car question um, yeah. you know because you mentioned your car guy was there a, a, a car poster that you had on your wall as a kid um, you know for me it was like that white Lamborghini Tash with the Pirelli logo really? on it. Oh yeah, yeah. What a terrible car. I know, I know. I've heard it's like the worst car to drive. Like <laughs> it's one of those like situations where you don't want to meet your hero sort of thing. Sure, but, sure, sure, sure. But for you, like, what was that one car that you loved when you were uh, a kid? I mean, for for me, it was probably depending on the age. For me, it was the Mach One. The Mach One, that's there. Then also, that, then after that, Gone in 60 Seconds came out with Eleanor. With Eleanor. And I, that was very similar to like the car that I loved. Yeah. Um, so that was just you know the way that car sounded and everything. Yeah. And oddly enough, when we had uh, when I worked at the mechanic shop, we rebuilt the replica of it. Guys spent 140 grand on it. Beautiful on Eleanor. Full. I think I've seen it for sale in the auto trade. And uh, you would get more looks than Lamborghinis yeah. or anything on the street. So there was probably that. And then when I was a mechanic, uh, I wanted to get a 911 turbo uh, by the age of 25. I'm like, if I don't get a 911 by the time I'm 25, there's no reason to live anymore. I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> then I hit 24 and I could buy one in yeah. cash. But then I was business savvy enough that I'm like, this is a terrible investment. You need to dump 160 grand into this car. Yeah. So uh, Mach 1, Eleanor style, and then uh, the Tristan 911. Describe the most unpleasant job you've ever had to do. It's well, a few. Uh, I worked with my dad for a while. I started working with him when I was about five or six, and I'd work on evenings and weekends. He worked me like a dog. Hang on a second. He started working you at five or six. Yeah, yeah. After schools and on weekends, uh, he paid me a nickel an hour, and. Wow. Uh, it was a great learning experience. Like it really instilled like hard worth ethic because he's he just works himself like a dog. Uh, but uh, it was physically hard work, and he was always expected more out of me than I had at the age of you know six, seven, and eight uh, and stuff like that. So that was tough. But I probably the most uh, the toughest job, and this is actually probably one of the core reasons why I'm an entrepreneur as well, is that I used to work at uh, I worked at like IKEA as a forklift operator and all kinds of stuff. But I had one job where I, where I was forced to do something I didn't want to do, which was I worked at a grocery store in like the landscaping division or whatever. And um, the, for some reason, the bakery, somebody put the wrong bread, and like some garbage into the wrong bin. And they wanted me to change, like take the stuff out and move it into another bin. Mm-hmm. And they want me to jump into the bin. And it was like moldy bread or something. And I was, oh, like, I was just like dry, like throwing up in my mouth basically. And they were like trying to force me to do it, and eventually I'm like, I'm not doing it. And then I think one, that's one of the reasons why I like to have full control over what I do and not yeah. get forced into things. Um, what did your dad was, have you do for a nickel an hour? Uh, so he had a, a tree cutting business, almost like landscaping. Um, so I would help him with that. Uh, and so he did that. He, so he's an iron worker, does like uh, high rises, and is fearless when it comes to heights. I'm terrified, but he used to do that type of work. So picking up branches, stacking wood. Um, all that kind of stuff. Very physical yeah. uh, type stuff. It's a lot of work for a five, six year old.